So, we will discuss few problems. The first problem is so that the vibrational entropy of a 3D solid described by by the Einstein model S equals to 3 n k or k b x by e to the x minus 1 minus l n 1 minus e to the minus x. Where x equals to h nu by k b t. This is the problem. Uh, so, that the vibrational entropy of a three dimensional solid described by the Einstein model is s equals to 3 n k b x by e to the uh, x minus 1 minus l n 1 minus e to the minus x where x is h nu by k b t. So, to solve this problem we have to use the expression for entropy. So, S is we know S is k b ln q plus E average by t. So, E average is 3 n ln q vibrational and if we substitute this, so we get or rather q here is q to the 3 n or we can write q is e to the minus beta h nu by 2 by 1 minus e to the minus beta h nu. that is small q or q vibrational here. So, this to the 3 n. So, we write L n q is 3 n minus 3 n beta h nu by 2 minus 3 n ln 1 minus e to the minus beta h n. So, in order to uh, get uh, average of energy, we get we know how to calculate average of energy. So, this is del ln q by del b del beta when n and v constant. So, we have got value of ln q if we substitute if we now differentiate ln q with respect to beta at constant n and v. So, we get del ln q by del beta at constant volume is minus 3 n h nu by 2 minus 3 n by 1 minus e to the minus beta h nu times minus e to the minus beta h nu times minus h nu. So, this is the value of del ln k q by del beta. Okay. So, uh, if we simplify further this one, we get average energy is 3 n. So, average energy is minus of del ln q by del beta. So, we get average energy E n e is 3 n h nu by 2 plus 3 n h nu by e to the beta h nu minus 1. 
So, this is the value of average energy. So, now if we substitute all these things, we get entropy. So, S is now K B ln Q. So, K B times minus 3 n beta h nu by 2 minus 3 n ln 1 minus e to the minus beta h nu plus 1 by t times 3 n h nu by 2 plus 3 n h nu by e to the beta h nu minus 1. So, this is the value of s. So, we get now you beta is 1 by k b t that we know. Okay. So, if we substitute that we get s is minus 3 n h nu by 2 t minus 3 n k b ln 1 minus e to the minus beta h nu plus 3 n h nu by 2 t plus 3 n h nu by t times 1 by e to the beta h nu minus 1. So, this and this they get cancelled. So, we get S is 3 n k b x by e to the x minus 1 minus l n 1 minus e to the minus x. If we substitute uh, as x is h nu by k v t. Okay, so, this is a, a only a very simple analytical problem. Okay, so, we can prove that end of the entropy of a three dimensional uh, solid which follows Einstein model is 3 n k b x by e to the x minus 1 minus l n 1 minus e to the x where x is h nu by k v t. So, okay. so, the next problem we discuss now is very, very interesting problem. Consider a solid where a fixed number of atoms, fixed number of atoms n form into a crystal where the atoms sit in an ordered array ordered array of array on the sides so on the sides of a lattice. Consider a solid where a fixed number of atoms n form into a crystal where the atoms sit in an ordered array on the sides of a lattice and Schottky defect is a lattice without a lattice site without an atom. Assume that there are small n number of lattice sites
that do not have any atom and each defect costs energy of epsilon. Calculate the Helmholtz free energy as a function of small n that is a n. Also so, also so that the equilibrium number of defects can be written as small n average is e to the n capital N by e to the beta epsilon minus 1. Okay. The second problem is consider a solid where a fixed number of atoms n form into a crystal, where the atoms sit in an ordered array on the sides of a lattice. And Schottky defect is a lattice site without an atom. Assume that there are small n number of lattice sites that do not have any atom and each defect consists is defect cost energy of epsilon. Calculate the Helmholtz free energy as a function of small n that is a in bracket n. Also so the equilibrium number of defects can be written as capital N equals to S, small n average equals to capital N by e to the beta epsilon minus 1. Now from this problem it is clear that capital N number of sites in the lattice are occupied and small n number of sites in the lattice in the lattice are unoccupied. So, total number of lattice site is capital N plus small n, right. So, what is the weight of the distribution, okay. So, weight of the distribution If we see call weight of the distribution is W, so weight of the distribution is capital N plus small n factorial by capital N factorial and small n factorial. So, we get ln W is ln n plus n factorial minus ln n factorial minus ln n factorial or you can write ln w is n plus n ln n plus n plus n plus n minus n ln n minus n and then minus n ln n minus n. So, we get ln w is n plus n 
ln n plus n minus n ln n minus n ln. So, this is the value of uh, ln w. So, s entropy s is related to ln w by the expression k v s is ln k s equals to k v ln w. So, if we substitute the value of ln w here in the expression of s, we get s is k v So, s is k v at n plus n ln n plus n minus n ln n minus n ln n. So, this is the value of s and a which is function of n is E minus T s. So, what is E? E is E average is n times epsilon because we have n small n number of sites are vacant and each defect cost energy of epsilon. Okay, so, we get a n is n epsilon minus k b t n plus n so this is the expression for helmholtz free energy so helmholtz free energy a which is function of n is n times epsilon minus k b t n plus capital N plus a small n times ln n plus n minus n ln capital N ln capital N minus n small n ln small n. So, this is the expression for uh, Helmholtz free energy. So, uh, we get uh, uh, equilibrium uh, configuration from uh, this Helmholtz free energy by minimization of. So, the minimization of a n t the minimization of a n t a n with respect to with respect to small n gives the equilibrium number of defects. So, we need to maximize, we need to uh, differentiate a n with respect to n and then make it 0. Okay. So, if we do it, so first we differentiate a with respect to n, we get epsilon minus ok. So, first we simplify a, then it will be much easier. So, if we simplify a n first and then if we do the differentiation, it will be much easier. So, a n is n epsilon minus k b t a n k v t l n n plus n minus n k v t l n n plus n minus n l n n minus n l n n. Now, if we differentiate a with respect to n, we get epsilon first n epsilon gives epsilon and then we have n by n k b t by n plus n minus n k b t by n plus n minus k b t ln n plus n minus 0 minus ln n minus 
n times 1 by n. So, we get d a n by d a n by d n. So, we get d a n by d n equals to epsilon minus k b t times l n n plus n plus 1 minus l n n minus 1. and this gives 0 as we said. So, we get epsilon minus k b t l n n plus n by small n plus to 0. So, it gives us n is n by a to the beta epsilon minus 1. So, we can prove that okay, small n equals to capital N by e to the beta epsilon minus 1, where beta again 1 by k b t. Okay, so, next problem we discuss says problem number 3, a two level system system of n is nothing but n 1 plus n 2 number of particles is distributed between two states 1 and 2 with energies u 1 and e 2 respectively. The system is in contact with a reservoir at temperature T Kelvin. If a single quantum emission occurs, population changes into two into minus one and n 1 to n 1 plus 1. For n 1 much much greater than 1 and n 2 much much greater than 1 obtain the entropy change of the system second problem the entropy change of the reservoir reservoir and Problem C is from A and B obtain a derived 
the Boltzmann distribution derive the Boltzmann the Boltzmann relation. So, this problem states a two level system of total n number of particles where a capital N is the total number of particles equals to n 1 plus n 2 distributed between two states 1 and 2 with energies e 1 and e 2. So, number of particles in energy e 1 is n 1 and number of particles in energy level e 2 is n 2 at the beginning. The system is in contact with the reservoir at temperature T Kelvin. If a single, a single quantum emission occurs, the population changes n 2 to n 2 minus 1 and n 1 to n 1 plus 1. For both n 1 and n 2 much much greater than 1 obtain the entropy change of the system or for the process. The entropy change of the reservoir and from the release from the uh, answers of A and B, we need to derive the Boltzmann relation. So, before emission, before emission, the number of particles number of particles in energy state u 1 was n 1 and the number of particles in energy state E2 is N2. After emission, the number of particles in energy state E1 is n 1 plus 1 and the number of particles in energy state E 2 is n 2 minus 1. So, S before emission the weight of the distribution if we say the weight of the distribution is W 1. So, W 1 is we have total capital N number of particles and then we have N 1 number of particles in energy level E 2 E 1 and N 2 number of particles in energy level uh, E 2 and capital N is N 1 plus N 2 factorial by N 1 factorial say N 2 factorial. So, this is the weight of the distribution before uh, emission. So, after emission, the weight of the distribution if we say the weight of this of the distribution is W 2 after emission, then again we have total n, n, n number of particles, but now we have n 1 plus 1 particle in the energy level 
E1 and N2 minus 1 particle in the energy level E2. So, we get N1 plus N2 factorial by N1 plus 1 factorial and times N2 minus 1 factorial. So, we have uh, got the weights of the distribution before emission as well as after emission. So, once we got this uh, weight of the distribution, we can calculate entropy before emission and entropy after emission. So, before emission, the entropy before emission. So, we know the weight of the distribution related to uh, entropy. So, uh, if we say the entropy, uh, entropy before emission is S1, so S1 is Kb times ln W1. So, we get S1 is Kb ln W1 is uh, N1 plus N2 factorial by N1 factorial times N2 factorial. And if we simplify this one, we get S1 is Kb So, this is the uh, value of entropy change before emission. So, the entropy change, uh, the entropy before emission is, we say S1 is Kb N1 ln N1 plus N2 by N1 plus N2 plus ln N1 uh, plus N2 by N2. So, the entropy change after emission is the entropy after emission, the entropy after emission, if we say the entropy is S2 is Kb ln W2. So, we will substitute the value of W2 here. So, we get S2 is Kb W2 is N1 plus N2 factorial by N1 plus 1 factorial times N2 minus 1 factorial. So, we get S2 is Kb ln N1 plus N2 factorial minus ln N1 plus 1 factorial minus ln n2 minus 1 factorial. Now, if we apply Starling's approximations because both n1 and n2 are very, very large. So, we write Kb S2 is Kb times n1 plus n2 minus n1 plus n2 then minus so this
this is the first term and now the second term. And then we have one more term here, so that is your so if we simplify we get S2 S K B N1 plus N2 ln n1 plus n2 minus n1 plus 1 ln n1 plus 1 minus n2 minus 1 ln n2 minus 1. So, change in entropy of the system, so the entropy change of the system or due to this process, entropy change of the system, if we say delta S is S2 minus S1. So, if we do it, we get S delta S is Kb ln n2 by n1 plus 1 or you can write delta s nothing but k b ln n2 by n1 because as n1 is very very large so n1 plus 1 you can write as n1. So, this is the entropy change of the system and entropy change of the uh, reservoir. We said delta S is U1 minus E2 by T, right. Okay. So, the or E 2 minus E 1 not E 1 minus rather E 2 minus E 1 by T. Okay. So, we get since, so the entropy change of the system, the entropy change of the system if we say delta S 1 here and the entropy change of the reserve by if we say delta S 2. So, delta S 1 is nothing but equals to minus of delta S 2. So, if we substitute we get K B ln N 2 by N 1 equals to U 1 minus E 2 by T. So, we get N 2 by N 1 equals to E to the minus eta E 2 minus E so, this is nothing but Boltzmann relation. Okay, so, we discuss another problem here. So, the third law, the problem number uh, 4 is, yes, 4 is the third law of thermodynamics. asserts that limit t goes to 0 is equals to 0 for any macroscopic system. What condition has to be satisfied for this claim 
to hold. Okay, so the problem number four says the third law of thermodynamics asserts that limit s goes to zero, limit t goes to when limit t goes to zero, s goes to zero for any macroscopic system. So, what condition does or what condition has to be satisfied for this a claim to hold? Okay. So, we know partition function q is sum over i sigma i e to the minus beta e i, where sigma i is the degeneracy of ith level. Okay. So, we get if we expand it, we get <coughs> sigma 0 e to the minus beta uh, e 0 plus omega 1 e to the minus beta e 1 plus omega 2 e to the minus beta e 2 etcetera, where 0, omega 1, omega 2 etcetera are the degeneracies of the uh, ground state, first excited state and uh, second excited state uh, etcetera. And E 0 is the ground state energy, U 1 is the first excited state energy, E 2 is the second excited state energy. So, here omega 0 is the degeneracy of ground state omega 1 is the degeneracy of first excited state omega 2 is the degeneracy of second excited state and so on and so on. Similarly, E 0 is the energy of the ground state. E 1 is the energy of the first excited state E 2 is the energy of the second excited state and so on. and so on. Okay, now, what we do? We further simplify q by taking out sigma omega 0 e to the minus beta e 0. If we do it, we get 1 by 1 plus omega 1 by omega naught e to the minus beta delta e 1 plus omega 2 by omega naught e to the minus delta beta delta e 2 to the minus beta delta e 2 and so on, where delta e 1 is e 1 minus e naught. delta e 2 is e 2 minus e naught and so on and so on. Okay. Now, at low temperature, or when t goes to 0, beta goes to infinity. So, 
delta beta delta u1 is much much greater than 1 and so on. So, we get q is omega 0 e to the minus beta e 0. Okay. And so, if you take log, we get ln q is ln omega 0 minus beta e 0. Okay. Or you can write k b ln q is k b ln omega 0 minus e 0 by t. We can write S is nothing but K B L N. So this says S goes to zero when omega zero goes to one. That means in order to hold that claim, the ground state. must be degenerate, non-degenerate, must be non-degenerate to get limit t equals to 0, s equals to 0. So, it says that ground state must be non-degenerate or the degeneracy of the ground state must be equals to equal to 1 in order to get or you have to hold the relation limit t goes to 0 is equals to 0. Thank you.